Welcome to a special edition of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today I'm talking with Marcel LeBlanc, the adorable young actress who played the role of Mary Ellen in the recent remake of The Homecoming. And she took some time out so we could sit and talk about The Homecoming and playing the character of Mary Ellen. Yeah, so so how's it been? I did a little um, overview uh, for on my YouTube channel, uh, letting people know it was going to be on and, um, you know, encouraging them to kind of, you know, give it a look and, and try not to look at it as a copy, but just as right. its own show. And I said, think of it as Walton Cousins or something. Yes. <laughs> I like that analogy. I like that analogy a lot. When we were making it, obviously we took some liberties and we made it our own and we didn't do an exact copy of the original homecoming. Cause it almost would have been wrong for us to do an exact copy of the original homecoming because it was so incredible and brilliantly done and is so loved. It would have been wrong of us to just completely redo it because that's already there. So we wanted to take it and make our own spin on it and do something new to it to kind of help bring the Waltons to a newer generation, which I'm really excited about. And I know that a bunch of people came up to me and they were like, I know the Waltons, my grandparents watch that show, or I know the Waltons, my parents watch that show. And when I was a little kid, it would always be playing when I was in the house, but I was never really aware of what it was. And now that you're in it, I've, went, I've gone and back and watched the original series and been aware of it. And I love it. And I'm so excited for you guys. So it's been really great to kind of bring the Waltons to an entire new generation that didn't even know about it and now they know about it so everybody is getting to love it now just as much as we do and as, as I'm sure you guys do. Had you seen the original Homecoming movie before you did the um, this one? When I got my audition I remember looking at the breakdown and I was like, mom, why does this sound so familiar? And my mom started losing her mind. She was like, oh my gosh, they're redoing the Waltons. And I was like, what do you mean? And she looked at me, she went, you know, like the good night, John boy, good night, Mary Ellen, good night, Jim Bob. I was like, yeah, of course. And she was like, that's the Waltons. And I was like, oh my gosh, they're, I can't believe I'm auditioning for that. So I was so excited. And then when I was cast as Mary Ellen, I was like, oh, well, I'm going to go and watch it now. And then our first rehearsal, the creative team sat us down and was like, if you have not already, do not watch the original Homecoming or the original series. And we were all confused. We were like, why wouldn't we watch the original series? I mean, we're recreating the Waltons. Why wouldn't we? And they told us, they were like, when we are done filming, we want you to go back and watch it. But while we are making it, we want to make sure that you are preserving as much of your own interpretations of these characters in this storyline as possible. Because it was so iconic, it was so easy for us to get in our heads. I know that I, going into filming, there was a lot of pressure that I had put on myself because I was like, we are recreating something that is so iconic and that so many people know I want to do the best that I can. Um, so I was going to go watch it to be able to do that. But I know now being able to watch it after, I know if I had watched it and watched the series before filming, I would have gotten so in my head because I know that there is no way I will be able to play Mary Ellen the way that you played Mary Ellen. And I'm, I found ways that I could bring my own interpretation of her into the role. And then, and then did you, um, did you watch it after? I did. And I loved it. Oh my goodness. It's the sweetest movie. It's so like, there's so much about it that is so, was so needed then and is so needed now. And I think that it's so special that whether it's the original homecoming or our homecoming, there is a movie that families can sit down together and watch together as a whole family and find characters that they everybody can identify with. Whether you are 80 years old or eight years old, you can watch the Waltons and find somebody that you identify with or find something that you feel strongly connected to, which is so rare in television. So I'm just so grateful to be a part of something like that. And I, when I went back and watched the original, I just felt even more in love with the story. That's cool. Um, how did you, how did you see Mary Ellen? What was your, your take on her when you read it and were developing the character and playing the scenes? I, I mean, the immediate takeaways from Mary Ellen is how feisty she is. I mean, she is a, she's a fighter and she knows exactly who she is. And that is so, that's something that I like to find, think a lot of myself is because it took me a while to get to that point of feeling like, feeling like 
who I was was enough and feeling so strong about myself. And what I admire a lot about Mary Ellen is she is 14 years old and she knows exactly who she is. And she is not going to let anybody tell her that who she is, is not okay. And that's something that I am so grateful to be portraying to a young audience of especially young females is I know it took me a while to get to a point where I was feeling confident in my skin and confident in who I was. And now I'm playing a character where I get to portray that to everybody watching. And that makes me just so ecstatic. Cool. And are you, are you a tomboy in real life? I have had my tomboy phases for sure. As of right now, no, I am uh, Miss America's outstanding teen right now. So I am currently in the crowns and sashes and gowns um, era of my life. Um, Did you, because of um, the experience there in the filming, were there, were there questions that you had or things that you wished you had known or said, gosh, if I if I could just ask this question, or if I just knew this, were, were there any things like that that crossed your mind while you were going through the process of doing it? I think the biggest thing, the biggest question I had going into it was how much of the original story are we keeping and how much of the original story have we kind of altered and made our own. And that was always my biggest question when filming. Cause I remember thinking, I was like, oh, I can't wait to show this scene to a new audience. And then I was like, wait, maybe I'm not showing it to a new audience because maybe the scene has never happened before. Cause I remember thinking for the longest time that in the original film, Mary Ellen went to chop down the Christmas tree because it was in ours. So I just, I thought that that happened in the original. And then when I went back and watched it, I was like, oh wait, I guess, I guess not. So that was probably my biggest question was just wondering like how much of the story did we keep intact and how much of the story was kind of altered. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was really cool. I mean, as you saw in the original, Mary Ellen was a very featured character in Mm -hmm. both versions. And there were things as I was watching the new version where I went, Oh, that would have been cool. That would have been fun to go out and be involved in chopping the tree. And, um, you know, and, and I ended up with all, you know, different sorts of scenes, particularly yes. with, with, with John boy, with Richard and, you know, the stuff in the barn and the, you know, that whole way that, that, that side of her inner turmoil and the growing pains and the angst and all of that teenage stuff was all reflected more through some of those scenes and, and her right. insecurities about, you know, her looks and, and all that kind of thing. And um, so I, I thought it was interesting that, the variation on how they chose to portray those aspects of the character. Right. Yeah. But um, I always, I always found her um, a really fun character to play. And oh, she, I don't know about you. I was not as much of a rebel play. in real life. I was a wannabe rebel. I wanted <laughs> to be, you know, but I was just like, I didn't like to get in trouble. So I was oh, like, me neither. Just in school. So it's like, so that, I feel like I get my fill when I'm, <laughs> when I'm Mary Ellen, I get my fill of rebel when I get to be Mary Ellen. And then I step yeah. out of that and then no more. Yeah. I love it. I get my fill of the that. consequences. I get the thrill of Mary Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> like I get in all the trouble and not really pay the price. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you were absolutely adorable as Mary Ellen, you know, I, congratulations on that. Now we shot October in the studio and like, first week of November. So it was cold. We were in the snow, which made it, so we were freezing right. uh, while we were filming as opposed to I wish to we were you. freezing. I Ooh. wish so badly we were freezing. So when and where for, you know, for everyone watching, what, uh, what time of year and where were you filming and what was all that? So we were filming in Covington, Georgia in June. So it was about 115 degrees outside with I mean, 1933 winter clothes is no joke. I mean, it was wool and I mean, it was so, so hot, but we had these like vests under all of our clothes where they could slip ice packs in the back of them. Mm -hmm. So if we were outside, I remember our first, my first day of filming was uh, the graveyard scene. And -hmm. when we were walking to the graveyard and do it like chopping down the tree and that was all the first day of filming. And we filmed that entire day outside. So they were constantly changing those ice packs out. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we had our holding tent had AC pumping through it. So they were trying, they did, they went above and beyond to make sure we were not dying, Mm -hmm. but it was, it was very hot. I've never experienced heat like that in my life. And I will never take air conditioning for granted ever again. Yeah, that's, those (laughs) those are 
those are tough. And what about like all this, because they, they did this amazing scenery with all of this snow. So was all of the snow there fake? How did they, how did they do that? So I have some pictures of it, but there was a lot of snow sheets and they laid these snow sheets out for like, I think there was a certain amount of acres where they laid them all out to win like close-ups. And for a, a majority of it, you, there was, you could see the snow on the ground. And then when we were filming close-ups, they would have, obviously they would have fake snow falling in front of the camera and falling around us so that you could see the snow. But then when it came to the actual, when you, when we are walking into the cemetery and it comes up and you see Walton's mountain, none of that was there. Okay. So it that was, was all computer yes. CGI, which I mean, it turned out so be I've actually had people ask me, they were like, so you filmed this in like Canada, right? And I was like, nope, I filmed it in Georgia. They were like, how did you do that? That looks nothing like Georgia. But it was, it's part of, it's what's so cool, especially about filming stuff like that is that I saw the beginning of it. I was there when I filmed the cemetery scene and it looked nothing like that, but now it's on and it's so beautiful. So it was, I mean, it was really cool to see how it all turned out. Yeah. Um was there, and, and you, you mentioned that you're from Alabama. I am. Okay. And most of the cast uh, is from parts of the South or? So there were three, our John Boy, Olivia, and adult John were all cast out of LA. And then the rest of the cast, anybody else that came on screen was cast out of Atlanta. So we were all, except for, I believe, Calloway. Calloway was cast out of Atlanta, but she's from Colorado. Um, okay. But we were we are all Southeast actors, so all of us are very close to the Atlanta area. So how did um, how were those relationships as you built them personally and for the characters? I mean, I have never experienced a bond quite like the one that we made on set for the Waltons. And I remember before filming the Waltons, I had never been able to pinpoint a favorite project I had done because I kind of loved them all equally. And I had so much fun on all of them. And now whenever people ask me what my favorite project I film it, I filmed is, my mind immediately jumps to the Waltons, no hesitation. Cool. Have you heard anything? Have, have you been given any information about what's happening going forward? Not quite yet. Um, we haven't been given any definites as to what's happening going forward, but um, we did, we were able to hit a season high in viewers for the CW, which was so incredible. And um, obviously the CW and Warner Brothers were very excited about that and seeing just how well, I mean, the Waltons was received um, because I mean, the Waltons is the Waltons and they were so excited to see that it is still just as relevant today. And um, so we are so excited to hopefully, fingers crossed, move forward with it. For us, I mean, we shot in the seventies, so we were still pretty far removed from, I mean, I had no, obviously no personal experience of the depression or anything like right. that. Now being this much further removed, how was that in terms of um, building a sense of you know, the early 1930s and the depression, how much, you know, research or checking around, was it all you felt in the script or how did you, how'd you address that? How did the company and, you know, the team address that? So we were actually, a, a lot of the cast was given, it's almost like a booklet about 1933 so that we could all kind of have a better understanding of that, because especially for the younger people on set, the most that we know about 1933 is what we learned in history class. Mm -hmm. So, and obviously that is not enough information to quite go back to that time and be like, now I'm living in 1933. That's kind of the biggest thing I'm curious about right now and anxious about is seeing if we were to continue, how, what direction would we take that in? And I'm really anxious to see that. And I also know that, I mean, and I know that you know this as well, that our executive producer has um, talked about wanting to bring the original cast back in different roles. And I and my, I would be really curious to see how he's planning on integrating you guys. And and I hear he he, he said that he's going to bring Ben back, which I know there was a yes. lot of- Yes, <laughs> I'm very excited about, about that Mr. because ben. I mean, our little family of six is so close, but we are, we are anxious to get in another one. I mean, <laughs> I am so excited that we are, um, that we are going to bring Ben back. Um, Cause I remember- I remember when I got the audition, I was like, I feel like something's missing. And I looked it up on IMDb. I was like, there's a seventh kid. Where's the seventh kid? Um, and after hearing our executive producer talk, I mean, he wanted to make sure that all of the characters that he had in his, um, in our movie had, um, 
a substantial storyline and he didn't really, he didn't want to have a seventh kid that would just be there for filler lines. Because if Ben was there, he wanted Ben to be there and have a story and not just be there for the sake of having him there. I want to thank Marcel for taking time out of her schedule to sit and talk with me. And I'll be back with more behind the scenes of the Waltons and more Ask Judy. Thanks for watching.